Hey guys, I'm back. So, I um, wanted to talk a little bit about the different components that we have involved um, in, in this lithium uh, and solar build. Again, this is part of a series, Comprehensive RV Lithium and Solar Power. Um, one of the key pieces of, of a lithium and, and solar power uh, build is, is obviously going to be your lithium cells. Um, these are each 100 amp hour, um, 3.2 nominal each cell. So this shrink wrapped package here, and I did the shrink wrapping. Um, this shrink wrap package here uh, would be a 12 volt bank at 100 amp hours. Now these four cells cost me around 500 bucks. I think they're a little, I think about 130 bucks each. Um, they're they're made by Calb C A L B, um, and they're one of their newer models. Um, they they tend to be very stabilized. They don't swell uh, very easily, um, and they're they're lithium iron phosphate, so um, they don't tend to catch fire like your cell phone batteries do. Um, so this one is uh, actually. Um, like I said, a 12 volt bank here. I'm going to be tw doing 24 volts. So uh, the, sh the largest shrink wrap I could find um, would only do four batteries. Actually, I probably could have gotten six, but that didn't make sense for me. So four batteries. Um, so I'll, I'll shrink wrap two sets and, of course, bolt them together. And what I'll get is something about like this. So each of these here is a 24 volt, 100 amp hour um, set and I'll have four of these in total. I've got two out here, well, two two assembled over here. One that I need to build, which I'll be videoing um, how, how I set up these batteries. Um, I've also got some Stark Power. These are drop in place. I'll probably put these up for sale. Um, they run they run close to about a thousand bucks each, right? So I'm, I'm getting this for about five, six hundred bucks. Um, and, and these are, you know, a, a thousand bucks, right? The, each one of those batteries, um, they're 24 volt batteries and they're 50 amp hours each. So they're the equivalent of a hundred amp hour, 12 volt battery, which is this guy right here. Um, this is great. It's got a built in BMS, uh, pretty much plug and play. You just hook it up like you would a normal battery. You just need to worry about your charging voltages. Um, uh, just, just to be on the safe side. Um, but uh, but these are great if you've got unlimited amount of of, of money um, and and you don't want the headache of of dealing with battery management systems or BMSs, uh, battery monitoring or management systems. Uh, it's a really good way to go. But I don't have unlimited battery or unlimited money um, or unlimited battery, so went with these. Um, ended up getting these pretty cheap, uh, shipped from China. Um, in a, in a fairly large container through a U.S. distributor and uh, like I said kind of put them all together. Now keep in mind 100 amp hours usable. I've, I've been um, I'm going to be using a technique called bottom, bottom balancing which does not require a BMS. Um, it's a much more economical way to go and it's actually a very good way to go if you have a quality lithium uh, cell and I'll get more into that as we do our one of our next videos about um, actually configuring and setting up the cells. But think about this for a second. 100 amp hour usable, paid between five and six hundred dollars, probably about five fifty shipped. Um, uh, hundred amp hours usable at twelve volts. You go out and you buy a good AGM battery. You're going to pay a couple hundred dollars or more. You're going to get about fifty amp hours usable. You're going to be up around four hundred or more dollars for 100 amp hours. It's going to require two 100 plus amp hour batteries uh, in parallel uh, to get to get 12 volt 100 amp hour or more usable. 500 plus bucks. Lithium can be cheap. If you're going to be doing bottom balancing you have to have a way of draining um, those batteries. This device is used heavily by um, the RC community and um, it has a lot more capability than what we use it for here um, but the, the main capability that it has is it's got the ability um, to discharge your batteries um, and it can do it one of two ways it can either discharge it with uh, with an internal resistor um, or if you've got another battery um, and I wouldn't recommend using your lithium batteries for this I'd get an old car battery or an old uh, a deep cycle battery that you have laying around. 
um, but you can clamp these batteries onto it, it discharges or these battery clamps onto it and as it discharges your cells and we'll do one cell at a time as it discharges your cells it'll discharge it into the battery uh, you have to supply power somehow um, so I'm supplying it power with these these um, sealed lead acid batteries that I have uh, in parallel red to red and black to black um, what else do we have here so I talked a little bit about how do we protect our batteries um, obviously we don't want to over discharge them and they fall off that cliff and the world has ended um, we have I'm starting to I used to send all my money to Apple and now I send it all to Victron um, Victron has what they call a battery protect it does a couple of things one it um, it has a huh, fits nicely, doesn't it? Hmm. Interesting. Okay. So what this is is uh, I, I think it uses uh, MOF sets or whatever they call them, but but basically this device allows you to set a um, uh, a low dis a low discharge cutoff point. Um, and so what we can do is we can actually set this up. Um, the, and by the way, inverters and chargers, I should say inverters, um, you can usually set a, a discharge cutoff point or a, or a low voltage disconnect on those. Um, but you may have other systems other than just your inverter, um, such as your lighting and your furnace, uh, refrigerator possibly if that's 12 volt. Um, this, this discharging these batteries that you may not have that control over. So we need some way to protect that bank um, and, and, you know, have one device hooked into the bank and then everything else hooked into the device. Um, and so I'll be using these, um, they're 100 amps, right? So that might, might not be enough for some people, uh, but when I have four of these banks, each with their own 100 amp, I'm going to be getting 24 volts at 400 amps total between all four banks. Um, that's a lot of power. I'm not gonna pull that much power. If I, if I am pulling that much power, you're gonna hear some like, you know, humming and, you know, planes are gonna veer off course. So um, this is gonna be plenty, plenty large enough uh, at 24 volts, 100 amps. And it'll protect it, it allows you to configure it. Um, uh, you can actually hook it up to a BMS if you are using a BMS or some other device that can tell it when to cut out. but um, by, by, by default, um, you can set some, some different low voltage cutoff points and it's got some in there and there's, um, some that'll cut off at the, uh, the, the perfect number. And as, as we build this, I'll get into a little bit more detail. It also has, um, sort of an overcharge point. You don't have as much control over that. Um, uh, but it does give you a limit that's still within, um, uh, not, not ideal range, but, um, but it does give you a, a, a point where um, it will cut off if it's getting if it's, we're sending too high of a voltage to the batteries. Uh, the good news is you generally don't have a lot of different devices that are charging the batteries. You've usually got solar controllers um, and and uh, a charger or charger inverter that's charging them, and and you can generally control those. If if you don't have uh, an inverter um, and solar charge controllers that you do have finite control over, you need to invest in something a little bit better. And I do recommend the Victrons. Um, they're just phenomenal products. Um, if 100 amps isn't good enough for you, I've got one here that I need to return. Um, but I believe this is, uh, what is this? 220 amps. And these are the, these are just the, um, the operating. Um, e each of these do have a surge. And, and I think the surge is, around 400 amps or 600 amps or something crazy like that for, for uh, I don't know, 30 seconds or something. So this one's a little bit nicer. It's got some cooling fins built in and uh, it's metal, whereas this one's plastic over here. Um, and they're not too pricey. I think this big one is a little over 100 and the smaller ones are, I don't know, I forget. I'll have links to all this, I promise. I'm not going to get this back in the bubble wrap one-handed, but let me get this out of the way at least. Excuse my camera while I fumble with things here. All right. 
Next, you'll need some way of dealing with your state of charge. And, you know, I'm actually going to skip that because that's inside. Let's talk about fuses really quick. Um, so I'm using these uh, Blue C. Again, I'll, I'll create links to them, but Blue C makes these. These just clamp right onto your terminal. And um, yeah, I got one over here, a little bit easier to deal with. So as you can see, these screw onto your battery terminal and then you attach your battery cables to the top of it. Um, and you can get these fuses, little square fuses, um, in uh, all sorts of different sizes. Um, I think they go up to, I think they go up to about three or 400 amps, um, but quite a bit. Yeah, that, that block, this is this is the block here. You can see my, my small little store I have here. Um, you see that's rated up to, I can't see, but maybe you can. I need my glasses. 300 amps. Um, so I think they make the fuses also up to 300 amps. What else we got? How do we put this together? Um, so we talked about fuses. So I'm not going to talk about wiring and stuff like that, but you do need some shutoff switches. Um, I'm not going to get a whole lot into wiring um, in, in, you know, bus bars and things like that. But uh, um, you'll, you'll probably see a lot of that as I start to build out my system. Uh, but you do need some battery shutoffs, and I was going to put one on each bank. Um, so each of these will have one. So I'll have four total, um, and that should allow me to safely shut down a battery um the worst thing i i hate doing it um is putting a a, a battery cable <laughs> on a battery um where where there's a load um you know on you get that nice spark that scares the, the crap out of you um so let's kind of migrate inside here all right here you can see i've got another battery bank another hump 100 amp hour hump amp hour Another 100 amp hour uh, bank set up. Uh, a little piece of cardboard over it just to keep things from falling onto it. Um, the, the next thing that we want to talk about is a good state of charge. Um, you should get a shunt based one. And you can, I don't know if we can see here, but right down in there there's a shunt. And attached to that shunt is this little meter here. And that will monitor on your negative battery lead. Um, all the energy coming out of or going into your batteries. Um, as I mentioned, you can't use voltage as a reliable way to monitor um, state of charge. And so you really need something that's going to monitor amps in and amps out. Um, this one from Victron, um, not too expensive. It's a, and I'm not going to quote prices here, but it's a BMV702. Um, and it works well with lithium batteries. Um, it's been doing doing a good job. The next piece of this build is going to be um, actually a big part of this build is our inverter charger. Um, this is a Victron Multi Plus. Um, it's a 3,000 um, voltage amp, which is a little bit different than. Um, than watts apparently uh, it's a 24 volt model um, and it's got a 70 amp charger on it so 70 amps at 24 volts uh, that's some major major charging capacity um, an important component of that is the color control panel and Victron's going to eat a little bit of your money if you invest into them um, but uh, I don't know that we're going to get which right here. There we go. So this control panel, um, I'll do a, maybe maybe I'll do a more comprehensive view on this. But uh, this thing's pretty awesome. You control control a lot of your parameters. You can't program things completely with it, uh, but you can do a lot through that interface. Uh, and they just recently added the ability to monitor tank levels. So if you had propane or gray water, fresh water, so on and so forth. You can hook it into that control panel. That control panel also has a little USB dongle, uh, a little USB Wi-Fi dongle attached to it. Um, and that connects to the Victron portal, which allows you to monitor um, 
<clears throat> your your whole Victron system remotely. This piece here is the 12 volt, and I actually have two of these which can be um, configured in parallel. Uh, but that's the 24 volt to 12 volt um, uh, converter, and it's rated at 25 amps with a maximum load of 35 amps. Um, so in parallel, I'll have 50 amps um, with a surge of about 70 amps. Uh, Victron makes a number of, of different MPPT controllers, um, all with different um, voltage. I think that's, yeah, that's maximum voltage, and then this is maximum charging amps. Um, so when you're, when you're building your system and you're, you're trying to tie your panels in series and parallel and so on and so forth, um, they've got some different setups for uh, for the different voltages you might be might be dealing with. Um, Those are some flexible solar panels. I'll probably, probably use them in the short term to uh, get the sun out of my face here, to um, just get the solar system set up and going. But um, I can't really recommend these flexibles unless unless you've got a situation where you really need them to be flexible. Um, there, there's a couple reasons, and I'll get more into that a little bit, but uh, they do scratch very easily, and that's the, the primary reason. Um, but also, they tend to, um, I don't think they tend to get, uh, you know, their rated amounts unless they're perfectly aligned. Um, I've had cheaper, uh, rigid 100-watt ones that, um, even if the sun was at a lower angle, they were still producing a pretty good, um, a, a pretty good amount of power and uh, and these guys here, they just seem to, uh, you know, even when I had them perfectly aligned with the sun, I wasn't getting the rated amount. So I haven't been haven't been really happy with them. Um, and and again, we'll be looking to uh, to go through a, a local distributor. And I actually recommend that you can you can get solar panels down to around 50 cents a watt. Um, and, and the quality of the solar panels are going to be just as good as what you find with uh, the 100 watt panels that are popular on Amazon. So um, that's that's the final piece, the solar panels. And again, as we start to build the uh, the, the Venom, uh, build the solution into the Venom, we'll uh, we'll we'll get into you know mounting those panels. But uh, what you've seen today and and what you'll see in the coming videos will help you if you're thinking about. Uh, doing lithium or, or doing solar um, if you're thinking about getting rid of that you know kind of cheap modified sine wave inverter and want to go with a, pro a quality inverter charger like what we have with the Victron and, uh, you know Magnum and, and and a few other companies also make some good good hybrid um, uh, charger inverters um, we'll talk a little bit about what hybrid means in a later video too but uh, um, but hopefully this, this will be helpful to you guys. Um, I'm going to go ahead and find a point to stop here uh, so we can get into our next video, which is going to be about um, actually building the lithium pack. So have a good day, guys. Enjoy.